And welcome back to Microqueers. It's a bi-weekly queer horror short roundup, and I'm Joe. And I'm Trace, and we're doing another little bizarre short this week, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> we sure know how to pick them, don't we? No, I mean, it's honestly, I actually really enjoyed this one quite a bit. Um, I definitely understood it more than the last one, um, like without having to do a little bit of extra research. But um, yeah, so we're talking um, John Clayton's Schism, everybody. And uh, it is an animated queer thing. <laughs> yes, as they say on YouTube, it is a surreal short. So folks, if you haven't had the chance to check it out, Schism follows Kevin, a man who has trouble being physical with his boyfriend publicly. Kevin is riddled with intimacy issues that propel him to a grotesque world where his alter ego is constantly attempting to free him. Straight or gay, Schism is the story about the fear of commitment in relationships. See, I had actually read the last bit of that only, so about the fear of commitment and relationships, and so I was like, okay, that makes sense. But like, I didn't read the part about you know the pub the public like displays of affection, mm -hmm. and so watching it, I was like, oh, there's so many good. Okay, it's like let, let's get into this. So let's do it. Yeah, it, it, this story takes place in two different locations, right? We've got the real mm -hmm. world, and then we've got the inside, inside his of brain. his brain. Yeah, yeah kind yeah. of. <laughs> Oh, but it's like very trippy animation style, especially once we're inside the brain. It's very like, I mean, I feel like you're on acid watching some of this stuff happen. Mm -hmm. It's it's gorgeous. It definitely reminds me of anime style videos. It does, but then the way it kind of personifies um, like thoughts. Um, I, I know like it's not the same, but like, I, and we've talked about this before, but I've been watching Big Mouth recently on Netflix and they okay. personify a lot of mental illnesses like anxiety and depression and stuff right. via like, like uh, anthropomorphic like creatures and monsters and stuff mm -hmm. and so this one I think for me it was when they were walking around the, the couple was walking around public and um the the brain thing around him like all the eyes appeared yes. and it's just like I, I just I thought that was a really really cool way to illustrate like how stressful that can be for some because honestly as queer folks like that is something especially depending on where you live that you kind of have to think about on a daily basis whereas if you're not yep. queer this is something that always people like um, forget, you know, like the, if, you, if you've never had to worry about like publicly showing affection towards your partner, uh, it's just, it's, just it's, it's a terrible experience. Yeah. And what I love is that in the short, this happens after we've gotten, some... I mean, sexy. again, we're, we're talking about animated sex. Yes. But like, it, it's not shying away from what it's trying to do. And you're like, okay, so these are two gentlemen who clearly find each other physically appealing. They have a good connection. Like you can see them looking in each other's eyes and like they, they seem very satisfied. And then immediately after that, they're out in public and it's like, oh, okay. So this is the public private divide. And it's so hard sometimes. Like, I don't know about you, but even in a very liberal progressive location, I don't always feel comfortable with PDAs. Like I don't want to hold hands in public because I don't want to invite that kind of trigger from other people. No, I mean, I understand. I mean, it's, I don't want to say it's a little bit different for me, but like my husband and I are not very like, like physically affectionate. Like, I mean, you know, we are like when like, we're being intimate with each other, but like, we're not really the kind of couple that, well, yeah, but like, we're not really the kind of couple that like, oh, we're just sitting on the couch watching TV. We're gonna like, oh, we're gonna lean into each other or we're gonna like just hold hands. We're, okay. we're not super touchy feely like that outside of the bedroom. Right. That being said, I mean, there have been times where, you know, we've had instances like that. And granted, we also live in a very liberal area, which is Austin, Texas, but you know, we've been in a town about 60 miles outside of Austin and it was a sports slash karaoke bar. Mm -hmm. And I remember I leaned in to kiss him and uh, my husband like pulled away because he was like right. not here. Because it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, like, I mean, you, if you're in a small town, you don't know who's around or who's mm -hmm. gonna wanna kill you for, for showing that you're queer in public. Yeah, I was looking at some of the comments on this short and one of the users did like 
almost a second by second rundown of like, this is what happens, this is what it means. And I, uh, you know, I, I didn't have the time and the inclination to go through it in quite that <laughs> great of detail. But one part that really stuck out was the emphasis on the lockers that are like implanted in the brain kind of sequences. And at one point when uh, Kevin finally frees himself, the lockers start to float up in the air. But previous to that, there's eyes inside the lockers suggesting- There's eyes there's a- everywhere. <laughs> there's eyes there's tongues there's this is sand what looks to me like beetlejuice sandworms that are inside his brain <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah i i think it's a great visualization like the lockers for me are very much not just the voyeurism but also the kind of to me it connotes a, a traumatic experience that happened in high school where mm-hmm. you either got locked inside the locker or you feel like oh. you were never free from those kinds of and eyes and that's a little tropey right I feel like in a lot of like 80s movies like the the nerd or the outcast gets put mm-hmm. in the locker but that, that 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 i didn't even pick up on that and that was something where you know i only watched this short once but that's something where there's a you know there's a lot going on visually yes. and symbolically and so yeah. I, it's not i don't think at least i didn't it's not possible to pick up on everything on one viewing but i i really like that reading of it um i was very much into the brain stem like the matrixy type plug-in mm-hmm. yeah I, I i read it just as like y- your brain controls you like even though like, you want to like let loose and be free like you, you're whatever history or trauma or whatever you have is constantly tethered to you and will not let you go and won't let you do certain things yeah I was interested because initially I thought it was going to be that he was struggling to let go of a past relationship like he was tethered to something Mm -hmm. and then I realized over time that it was like oh it's actually uh, a manifestation of his own issues and I love the symbolism of like the bust of the boyfriend with the chains and the lock well yeah he's slowly breaking it down but see that 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 to me was also like okay and again it's a generalization but like I feel like in the gay the cisgender gay male community specifically like yes. it's very much not like super monogamous it's not which is fine but it's also like there's not a lot of commitment and granted mm-hmm. obviously that exists you and i are both in like mar- we're both married right but generally speaking like there is it's very much a love is free like don't don't get locked down in a relationship and so i that 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 to me is what that statue represented with the chains and locks around it so like if he touched it or he went to it he was just going to be locked down and suffocated that, that uh, he, he perceived that he was going to be. Oh, interesting. Okay, I I definitely took it as trying to free the bust would allow him to have overcome his issues with public displays of affection and actually committing himself to this person, and that's what he's trying to get to. So it's like each individual action gets him one step closer to acceptance. I I don't disagree with you. I just um, I think to me what was kind of like feel, feeding into my perception like of that particular reading of it was when they merge faces. Uh-huh. I thought we were going to get a much less happy ending with it because again I'm watching this thinking okay the bust is symbolic of being trapped in like this hmm. one relationship. Okay. Uh, and so merging was like again his worst fear came true where it's like oh like it's it's like when you um in a group of friends if someone starts like dating someone and then it's like oh it's always like trace and andrew it's never just trace it's a we now it's never an i (laughs) yeah and so i mean that's again depending on how you're looking at if you're looking at this like from a queer specific angle like and like with like the eyes and stuff like i i can get that one reading but then the other one i see is like again when you're talking about a fear of commitment it's like okay well why are people afraid of commitment Mm -hmm. um at least Mm -hmm. internally not even based on external stimuli but right. um but yeah uh i but then of course with the ending we get with the hand holding fetus i'm gonna call it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i took that to be like this is the product of like it's we're moving into a new phase of the relationship um obviously this is a very very phallic imagery so it, it kind of looks like somewhere between a penis and a mushroom but you've got like pulsing red veins going up the stem <laughs> and, a lot of sounds too yeah it's very intense sound design on this um yeah. i mean it really transports you into the world of the film mm-hmm Yeah, uh, this is one of those things where I think animation has the capacity to do things that live action, like, can you imagine this is live action? It would probably be extremely disgusting. Whereas here you're like, oh, it's beautiful and uncomfortable and uncanny. And 
but it's really easy to get lost in the visuals as well, like to really just sink into them. Yeah, and it, it's also like a lot of body horror, right? Because we're literally yeah. inside his brain. It was reminding me a lot of, um, have you ever seen Akira? Yes, yeah. Yeah, right. it reminds me a lot of Tetsuo's transformation in Akira, and it's just like, ugh, ugh. Mm -hmm. Like, it's very uncomfortable, it's very odd. Like, I yeah. feel like you're, like, invading. I mean, the first shot we get in the in this short is of his brain, and there's, like, hair on it. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> or, or whatever it is, like, spikes or something. <laughs> it, it's just really it's icky and visceral and I kind of love how just the visual style alone can connote so many emotions and discomfort. Yeah. We've had two back-to-back -back weeks now, uh, or sorry, we've had two back-to-back microqueer entries right. where they're just very sensory, like I'm feeling a lot of things from these shorts. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't disagree. I mean, this one was easier, an easier pill for me to swallow than Flesh was a couple weeks ago, um, mm -hmm. just because it it's definitely a more straightforward narrative. Yeah. And I felt like for me, the, the metaphor was easier for me to grasp onto. Sure. Um, yeah. But that could also be because I'm a gay man and I'm not a mm. queer person of color, you know? Right. Yeah. But, and also you hate punk, so. <laughs> I really <laughs> I hate punk. And it be a barrier. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hate. It's just not for me. Not my oh, cup of tea. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I do hate it kind of though. I'm a rule follower at heart. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I, I'm trying to think. The only other thing, I, this is not even thematic at all, but I, the shower sex really perturbed me because um, I don't know about you. Oh. I know it, it, I, I don't like shower sex. Um, water dries oh. everything out and right. it is not my, again, not my cup of tea. I don't, I, it's, it, it, it's specifically when it comes to anal sex, I do not understand shower sex. <laughs> right. I was going to say, there's plenty of fun to be had in the shower, but I oh, wouldn't yeah. go that route See, for okay, a shower I, sex scene. I, 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 it depends on the size of the shower because like, okay, fucking no, it dries everything out. But like, I've also been like, where you know, you're like rimming someone in the shower and the water's just running off their back into your face. And you're, so you're like smothering on the hole while also getting like a face full of white. It's just too much. I don't need the water. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you need that rain for a shower, man. So you can just get around it, but you're still, you know, I, uh. I, I just want to get cold sometimes. Like, oh, I'm trying to well, do you, things, and I'm like, I, I just need a little hit of the water because well, you, you, you gotta get switch cold. again. Because I mean, my, my switch I, it I, up. Yeah, I don't have a big shower, so it's basically one of those like bathtub shower dual things. So like, you have to like switch places with your partner. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm gonna be under the water now. Okay, yeah, cool. Exactly. I'm gonna be under the water now. <laughs> also, I'm I'm sorry for your your small size. Yeah, no, it's it's not. It's terrible. I I would need a big shower. <laughs> yeah, I I. I you're a thirsty I, I, queen. I, I, you love a big shower. I get what you're trying to say, and I'm not going to feed into it. Um, oh, you never indulge me. It's no fun. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I mean, I, I I did really like this, and I did see. So this is the third of three animated films that Clayton did for his final year at university. So I'm assuming mm -hmm. he's Canadian or European because he's saying university. <laughs> um, I, I know. I, I think he lives in the U.S. now, but yeah, the language is definitely of the Commonwealth. <laughs> yes. Well, he said that he spent the most time working on this, uh, and it was continuously changing the animation, uh, with plot points changing almost weekly. Oh so this <laughs> was definitely something that evolved as he was doing it, which I think is even fascinating that it came out as yeah. streamlined as it does. It it really all came together then. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's an eight minute short. So I mean, like, but again, with animation, there's like I don't want to say there's so much more work involved, but there's it's a much different type of work than if you're doing live action. Indeed. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, would you watch a longer version of this? I would, um, but I don't know if I would make it feature length or if I would want like, I don't know, like a thir like a thirty minute series. Um, but maybe tackling like different characters and different um, aspects of anxiety or like I guess really mental mm. illness and like kind of see how those are personified per se in in the imagery of the brain. Right. Oh, that is fascinating. Yeah, I could see this as a web series where yeah. you maybe give each character, each uh, mental illness or condition eight minutes, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. Oh, yeah, okay. you know what, maybe that would work. I mean, again, I, I could have watched a longer version of this um, yeah, if we too. wanted to like spend more time in that. I mean, again, like I wouldn't watch a 90, I mean, I say I wouldn't watch a 90 minute version of this. Like, that's, I don't know. If it's good, I would watch it. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> but it's hard to I, imagine what this would look like at more than 20 or 30 minutes, right? Right. But I also like if it was live action, like, and, it, and like the sets of the brain were all done like practically um could you imagine how interesting like that would look 
I'm I'm picturing, yeah, kind of like you said, early early Tim Burton Beetlejuice era, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I even stop motion, like. Um, but again, that's also more work. <laughs> more work, but also fucking horrifying. Can you imagine this is stop motion? You would be shitting your. Pants. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I would be able to watch it. I couldn't do it. It's not 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 for me. Um, but but what? Uh, so, I mean, what about you? Um, I guess um, you're just going to the web series. I think so. Yeah, I I had the initial same impression as you where maybe like a 20 or a 30 minute version, but I do think seeing different, different kinds of people or different kind of ailments would actually keep this feeling fresh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. no, I agree. Well, listeners, let us know what you thought of Schism. Again, this is a a bit more um, abstract than what we've covered in the past. So I Mm -hmm. think uh, it's going to spark a lot of conversation, maybe even like me again. I think all of us can relate to this in some shape, way, or form as queer folks. So, yeah, let us know. And until then, uh, or uh, until then, uh, until next time, we can cross out schism. Yes, and cross out microqueers.